So in this video, we're going to calculate the Taylor polynomial for five terms for the function 1 over 1 plus x at the point 0. And there's again three things important to remember when you're doing your Taylor polynomials. The degree that you're calculating it to, so the degree n, so n is the variable that you will see in this function. And so as it's five terms, n is 5. The point in which you want to calculate it at, so the point is variable a. And in this case, it's at zero. So then you plug in zero for all these a's. And then a function, which is one over one plus x. And this is our generic formula for Taylor polynomial. And you can see it's got first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, fifth derivative. And then divided by one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four, five, and so on. And then multiply each one of those fractions by x minus a to the power of 1, to the power of 2, to the power of 3, to the power of 4. And you'll see that the fifth factor, uh, the fifth uh, 5 factorial, fifth derivative, and x minus a to the power of 5, they all go together in the same term. Same here with these have got the 4. These ones here have got the 3, and so on. The only one that's the odd one out is the first term, which is the value of the function at the point a, which is in our case 0. So, the next thing we've got to do is differentiate the function 1 over 1 plus x five times. So, when we do this, make a nice little table so we can calculate it and have the values set out in a nice easy way so it's nice and neat, and then you can just plug in the values. So, our function is 1 over 1 plus x, which can also be written as 1 plus x to the power of minus 1. And the value at 0 for this, so if we plug in 0 for 1 plus x, you get 1 over 1, which is 1. So that's why we get f of 0 equals 1. Next thing we've got to do, we've got to take the derivative of 1 over 1 plus x. Now when we take the derivative, what we always do is we multiply by the power. So bring the power, so in this case it's minus 1. So then minus 1 comes here to multiply it. And then we drop the, uh, the, um, the power by 1. So minus 1 minus 1 becomes minus 2. So that's how we get to this. And then the chain rule says we have to multiply by what's inside the brackets. But with this formula, 1 plus x is always 1. So that makes no difference. If it was 1 minus x, we'd have to multiply through again by minus 1, which would alter the signs of all these values at the front. So the first derivative is minus 1 times 1 plus x to the power of minus 2, which could also be written as the fraction like this, minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So plug in 0 for x, minus 1 over 1 squared is minus 1. So the first derivative of 0 is minus 1. And then again, we have to take the derivative of the first derivative to get the second derivative. So minus 2 multiplied by the whole thing at the front. So minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. And that's why we've got the plus 2 there and then drop the value of the power by 1. So 2 to the 1 plus x to the power of minus 3, which can also be written of 2 divided by 1 plus x cubed. And then 1 cubed is, is always 1 anyway. 1 to the 4 is 1, 1 to the 5 is 1, 1 to the 6 is 1. So that makes these calculations quite easy. So the second derivative, we can see, is valued at 2. 2 over 1 cubed. Then we take the derivative of gain. Again, minus 3 times minus 2. So minus 3 times 2 is, six, is minus 6. And then drop the power by 1. So you get minus 6, 1 plus x to the minus 4, which can be written in this way. So minus 6 divided by 1 is minus 6. Then we do minus 4 times minus 6, which is 24. Hence we get the 24 here. 1 plus x to the power of minus 5. We've dropped the power by 1 again which can be written 24 over 1 plus x to the power of 5. So again, with the, with the denominator being 1, the numerator being 24, the value of that is 24. And again here, minus 5 times 24 is minus 120. Minus 120 to the power of minus 6 can also be written as minus 120 over 1 plus, 6, 1 plus x to the power of 6, which is minus 120. OK, and that's all our derivatives done. So now all these values here, we can plug these into our function. So we're going to do it one step at a time. So here we go. This is what we got next. So next we plug in all the a's to be zeros and the n to be a 5 because it's fifth term. So t5x is the standard term 
the five degree Taylor polynomial. And then we plugged in at a zero for all the a's. And the x minus a is x minus zero. And I've left that first one in there, although it's just x. So you can see why these are just x squared, x cubed, x to the four, x to the five, and so on. Okay, so now we can plug in the values of all these things now. So we've got one. So the value at zero was one. Let's just have a look. There it is. So we've got one. Then the first derivative is minus one. So let's have a look at that. So the value is one. So that's why that value there is one. First derivative was minus one. So that will give us minus one over one factorial, which will give us minus one. And then minus one times x minus zero is just minus x. Hence why we're getting a minus x here. Then the second derivative, which we calculated here, was 2. So then we've got 2 divided by 2 factorial times x squared. So that's why we get that one there. That's that one. Third derivative was minus 6. So that's that one there. So minus 6 times x cubed over 3 factorial. So that's that one there. Fourth derivative is 24 so then we've got 24 over 4 factorial that's that one there divided times by x to the 4 so again this f to the 4 will become 24 then the fifth derivative is minus 120 so we plug in minus 120 here minus 120 over 5 factorial times x to the 5 so there we go that's that so now we can do a bit of simplification on this one because what we can see is that 2 factorial is just 2 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6. 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. And 5 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is 120. So these will all simplify out very nicely. So then when we simplify them out even more, we come across this. We get 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the 4 minus x to the 5. Notice that all these signs are flipped each sign, they're different each time. That's because we've got these minuses here. We can just flip this minus plus sign to become a minus sign. This one stays as a plus, this one goes to a minus. And that's how we get that, and that's our Taylor polynomial. And now what we can do, we can put that into a graph and just see how accurate it looks. So I've done a graph with our Taylor polynomial alongside the graph of 1 over 1 plus x. So there's our, our function. <clears throat> so here we go. So the dotted line is the real graph for 1 over 1 plus x. That's what you would get there. And then this thick black line is our Taylor polynomial. Now as you can see we were asked to calculate it at the point 0 which is here. So when x is 0 this is the part of the graph we're interested in. And you can see it's very accurate until you get to about minus 1 and it starts to tail away a little bit different. And same going down the other side, on the positive side, when it gets to about minus 0 0.75, our graph tails off down and diverges down to negative infinity, whereas the real function converges to zero eventually. So you can see, but that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in this bit here anyway. So we can say that our Taylor polynomial is very accurate. So there we go. We're satisfied with our answer. So the Taylor polynomial of 5 degrees at point 0 for 1 over 1 plus x is 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the 4 minus x to the 5. And that completes your answer. OK, thanks for watching. Uh, any questions leave below. And uh, as always, please remember to subscribe. Thanks very much.